Here we are. Welcome, everybody. Uh, can you please give me feedback if you can hear me and see me properly? We're waiting for uh, the connection. Um, professor will be here. First appointment of International Virtual Studium. For uh, the one of you who doesn't know, uh, Virtual Studium is uh, an interdisciplinary online project designed, promoted and coordinated by UCNA Campus Cultural Activity and uh, in collaboration with Uradio and Ciclomaggio. And I welcome Professor Verzichelli, who is Professor of Political Science and uh, the Rector's Delegate to Internationalization for the University of Siena. Welcome, Professor. We're so glad to have Hello, you in here. Can you hear me and can you see me properly? I can hear you. I, I don't know if my voice is uh, is clear because I, I got a little bit of noise, but I think it's fine. Okay, uh, the one of you who's listening and seeing us, can you please give us feedback if you can see and, and if you can hear us properly. So, Professor, I wanted to start uh, this first appointment. You are the first one <laughs> on International Virtual Studio, and we are so glad for having you in here. Uh, I wanted to start by asking you, why did you choose this uh, a little bit provocative title, which is Unlocking Europe, Mobility After COVID-19. Can you please explain it to us? Yeah, I, I can tell you quite quite clearly. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this is a wish in a way, because uh, I, I don't want to think my life and the life of all of you without mobility, especially through Europe, but in general, because uh, I've been, uh, you know, spending my life in mobility, uh, both as a as a traveler first of all as a traveler i have to say and then as a, as a professional and as a scholar as well i don't i don't i don't see life without being mobile discovering traveling a lot and and and, and be curious I, I used to say that uh, my father was called that and my mother was called curiosity i i cannot live without mobility so that's my answer <laughs> Perfect. Um, the main theme, of course, of international in virtual studium and, vir and of virtual studium itself is to spread knowledge and cultural thinking and of reflections about this um, a little bit difficult time, of course, that we are uh, like spending times in our homes for the quarantine and social distancing. Um, the first question, my first question, so it would be, how is this affecting our life and how this quarantine and this situation will affect, of course, the mobility? Yes, I think there are two, uh, two levels, let's say, we have to think. The first is the, the level of emergency. And we are, I think we, we are learning about uh, getting into something new uh, uh, suddenly, trying to, to get out from this and try to get out from this uh, thinking to those of, of us who are objectively uh, isolated because they, they, they live uh, uh, in, in, a, in a new place, uh, maybe in small rooms, maybe uh, they don't know exactly uh, how is the, you know, the health system in the country hosting them. They are without their family, maybe for the first time in their life. And, and, mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to, to these people, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm taking care of every every day in my in my in my uh, profession, and I think that uh, this is the first thing, and probably the first thing in history, because all the crises, all the wars, and everything in the past, they didn't, they they did not ha happen in a situation in which people were so mobile. So this was a, a absolutely new situation. I think uh, uh, astonishing and somehow uh, uh, shocking that we live. But there is a second level, which is uh, not necessarily a negative one and not necessarily a learning for crisis, it's a learning for life. We have to live with these kind of things. Uh, although I do hope that we don't have another crisis like that in, in you know, 10,000 years. Yeah. But uh, the problem is that uh, in any case, we have to be ready and we have to use our resources at our best in order to cope with the th problems 
and keep going, traveling, keep going, uh, learning about the rest, because especially in Europe, but not necessarily only in Europe, we need to keep the mobility on. So um, based on what on your reflections, uh, are you suggesting us that you we have to rethink of our professional and social styles uh, of life, way of life? True. Uh, style of life, for sure. And this will, will be probably for, for, for months uh, because we have to test how this uh, social distance or whatever you want to call in order to be safe uh, become a sort of a new style without, uh, you know, erasing our uh, human attributes, but to trying to, to be uh, uh, um, correct and to, to, to behave correctly. But this, especially for those who want to live uh, abroad, want to travel and want to study abroad, there should be a, a special learning process in order to, to, uh, to socialize at their best because we, we, can, we cannot stop our process. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, uh, for the longer run, for the, for the, for, for the you know, uh, life that we are going to do, I hope, in a few weeks from now, uh, we have to learn anyway how to... Uh, to uh, mobilize our resources much better and, and actually how to use this experience to improve our way of uh, being uh, curious and, 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 and traveling around Europe. We can uh, really take a lot of benefits in terms of, uh, uh, you know, legacies from this, uh, from this uh, emergency. Um, sorry, before of asking the following question, I wanted just to remind to our guests that they can uh, ask uh, the professor's question and in our comment section. Um, about the legacies you were talking about, um, the legacies of this pandemic situation in terms uh, of social and economic effects, uh, what about the legacies? What about this kind of legacies? Um. Uh, the, the social and economic uh, uh, cost uh, will be enormous, and of course, uh, I really hope. And this is a a a, a, a strong reaction from uh, from our governments, and particularly from the European Union. Mm, sorry. I'm sorry, Professor, but we are having kind of troubles in listening and seeing you. Professor, can you hear me? No. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, Professor, sorry, but we have we have lost we just have lost you <laughs> you you were okay. missing because yeah, because of the connection. Can you please just repeat uh, your words? Okay. Do you do you hear me now? Yes, do I do. But I yes, I do. But I wanted to hear from our public. Can you hear and see, Professor Swerdzigelli? I'm waiting. For I hear you. Do you hear? Me? I do. do. You hear me now? Yes, I do. Right now. Do you hear me now? Okay. Yes, I do. I do. Yes, I can see you. Okay. I, okay. I, I, I'll try to get out from... Uh... Okay, do you hear me now? Yes, yes, probably, yes. Okay, okay. maybe there's a, a problem with my... So, I uh, know, I was saying that uh, we have to learn uh, uh, how to, uh, to keep uh, being uh, uh, trustful and keep being uh, generous in terms of... Uh, 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 linking and, 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 and maintaining our links, uh, especially at the European and international level. And this is a big challenge because my, my concern is that people would be um, less motivated, particularly in, in having professional and studying experience abroad. So my, my point is that just trying to keep this uh, curiosity and this motivation to, 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 to being mobile. Okay, um, are we going to face uh, um, like deep changes, uh, even uh, um, like in terms of inclusion and parsimony, as you were saying? 
Yes, uh, this is a trade-off, of course. Uh, we need to uh, figure out the resources that could be used in the future, because, of course, we we will uh, get out from this crisis uh, with enormous costs, as we said already. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we need to invest uh, in, in, in new programs, and I do hope that especially the European Union could be uh, generous enough with the next uh, Erasmus program. But of course, uh, if you want to really uh, if you want to be really inclusive and 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 enlarge the number of uh, of people mobile, uh, we have probably to rethink some aspect. We have to cut all these program, uh, the existing programs that uh, reveal to be uh, too costly and uh, also uh, not uh, uh, properly um, uh, su uh, su sustainable in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, the Green Deal uh, program of the European Union. At the same time, we have to rethink other forms and maybe virtual uh, mobility can be an important instrument. An important, but not the only one, because we have to know the people around the Europe and around the world. So we have to try to get the balance of these instruments and 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 uh, without any interruption of the of the. Uh, uh, So here we are. Welcome, everybody. Uh, can you please give me feedback if you can hear me and see me properly? We're waiting for um, the connection. Um, professor will be here. First appointment of International Virtual Studio. For uh, the one of you who doesn't know, uh, Virtual Studio is uh, an interdisciplinary online project designed, promoted and coordinated by UCNA Campus Cultural Activity and uh, in collaboration with Uradio and Ciclo Maggio. And I welcome Professor Verzichelli, who's Professor of Political Science and uh, the Rector's Delegate to Internationalization for the University of Siena. Welcome, Professor. We're so glad to have Hello, you in here. Can you hear me and can you see me properly? I can hear you. I, I don't know if my voice is, uh, is clear because I, I got a little bit of noise, but I think it's fine. 
Okay, uh, the one of you who's listening and seeing us, can you please give us feedback if you can see and, and if you can hear us properly. So, Professor, I wanted to start uh, this first appointment. You are the first one <laughs> on International Virtual Studio, and we are so glad for having you in here. Uh, I wanted to start by asking you, why did you choose this uh, a little bit provocative title, which is Unlocking Europe, Mobility After COVID-19. Can you please explain it to us? Yeah, I, I can tell you quite, quite clearly. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this is uh, a wish in a way, because uh, I, I don't want to think my life and the life of all of you without mobility, especially through Europe, but in general, because uh, I've been, uh, you know, spending my life in mobility, uh, but as a as a traveler first of all as a traveler i have to say and then as a as a professional and as a scholar as well i don't i don't i don't see life without being mobile discovering traveling a lot and and and, and be curious I, I used to say that uh, my father was called that and my mother was called curiosity i i cannot live without mobility so that's my answer Perfect. Um, the main theme, of course, of international in virtual studio and, vir and of virtual studio itself is to spread knowledge and cultural thinking and of reflections about this um, a little bit difficult time, of course, that we are uh, like spending times in our homes for the quarantine and social distancing. Um, the first question, my first question, so it would be, how is this affecting our life and how this quarantine and this situation will affect, of course, the mobility? Yes, I think there are two, uh, two levels, let's say, we have to think. The first is the, the level of emergency. And we are, I think we, we are learning about uh, getting into something new uh, uh, suddenly, trying to, to get out from this and try to get out from this uh, thinking to those of, of us who are objectively uh, isolated because they, they, they live uh, uh, in, in, a, in a new place, uh, maybe in small rooms, maybe uh, they don't know exactly uh, how is the, you know, the health system in the country hosting them. They are without their family, maybe for the first time in their life. And, and, mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to, to these people, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm taking care every every day in my in my in my uh, profession, and I think that uh, this is the first thing, and probably first thing in history, because all the crises, all the wars, and everything in the past, they didn't, they they did not ha happen in a situation in which people were so mobile. So this was a, a, a absolutely new situation. I think uh, uh, astonishing and somehow uh, uh, shocking that we live. But there is a second level, which is uh, not necessarily a negative one and not necessarily a learning for crisis. It's a learning for life. We have to live with this kind of things. Uh, although I do hope that we don't have another crisis like that in, in you know, 10,000 years. Yeah. But uh, the problem is that uh, in any case, we have to be ready and we have to use our resources at our best in order to cope with the problems and keep going traveling, keep going, uh, learning about the rest, because especially in Europe, but not necessarily only in Europe, we need to keep the mobility on. So, um, based on what, on your reflections, uh, are you suggesting us that you, we have to rethink of our professional and social styles uh, of life, way of life? True. Uh, style of life for sure, and this will will be probably for 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 months uh, because we have to test how this uh, social distance or whatever you want to call in order to be safe uh, become a sort of a new style without uh, you know erasing our uh, human attributes, but to trying to to be uh, uh, um, correct and to 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 behave correctly. But this, especially for those who want to live uh, abroad, want to travel and want to study abroad, there should be a, a special learning process in order to, to, uh, to socialize at their best because we, we, can, we cannot stop our process. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, uh, for the longer run, for the, for the, for, for the you know, uh, 
life that we are going to do, I hope, in a few weeks from now. Uh, we have to learn anyway how to uh, to uh, mobilize our resources much better and, and actually how to use this experience to improve our way of uh, being uh, curious and, 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 and traveling around Europe. We can uh, really take a lot of benefits in terms of... Uh, uh, you know, legacies from this, uh, from this uh, emergence. Um, sorry, before of asking the following question, I wanted just to remind to our guests that they can uh, ask uh, the professor's question and in our comment section. Um, about the legacies you were talking about, um, the legacies of this pandemic situation in terms uh, of social and economic effects, uh, what about the legacies? What about this kind of legacies? Um, uh, the, the social and economic uh, uh, cost uh, will be enormous. And of course, uh, I really hope, and this is a, 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 a strong reaction from, uh, from our governments and particularly from the European Union. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Professor, but we are having kind of troubles in listening and seeing you. Professor, can you hear me? No. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, Professor, sorry, but we have we have lost you. We just have lost you. <laughs> you, you were okay. missing because yeah, because of the connection. Can you please just repeat uh, your words? Okay. Do you do you hear me now? Yes, do I do. But I yes, I do. But I wanted to hear from our public. Can you hear and see, Professor Swerdzigelli? I'm waiting. For I hear you. Do you hear? I do. You do. Hear me now? Yes, I do right now. Do you hear me now? Okay. Yes, I do. I do. Yes, I can see you. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll try to get out from. Uh... Okay. Do you hear me now? Yes. Yes, probably. Yes. Okay. okay. Maybe it's a, it's a problem with my. So I know I was saying that uh, we have to learn uh, uh, how to uh, to keep. Uh, being uh, uh, trustful and keep being uh, generous in terms of uh, 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 linking and, 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 and maintaining our links, especially at the European and international level. This is a big challenge because my, my concern is that people would be um, less motivated, particularly in, in having professional and studying experience abroad. So my, my point is that just trying to keep this uh, curiosity and this motivation to, 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 to being mobile. Okay. Um, are we going to face uh, um, like deep changes, uh, even uh, um, like in terms of inclusion and parsimony, as you were saying? Yes. Uh, this is a trade-off, of course. Uh, we need uh, to... Uh, figure out the resources that could be used in the future because of course we we will get out from this crisis with enormous costs as we said already uh, but at the same time uh, we need to invest uh, in, in in new programs and I do hope that especially the European Union could be uh, generous enough with the next uh, Erasmus program but of course uh, if you want to really uh, if you want to be really inclusive and 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 enlarge the number of uh, of people mobile, uh, we have probably to rethink some aspect. We have to cut all these programs, uh, the existing programs that uh, reveal to be uh, too costly and uh, also uh, not uh, uh, properly um, uh, sustainable in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, the Green Deal uh, program of the European Union. At the same time, we have to rethink other forms and maybe virtual mobility can be 
an important instrument, an important but not the only one, because we have to know the people around the Europe and around the world. So we have to try to get the balance of these instruments and 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 uh, without any interruption of the of the uh, uh, movement of uh, of people and movement of ideas, especially through Europe. I think this is a crucial particular for the European. Oh my God! Well, this is communication. Okay. Professor, we, we lost. Yeah, okay. We lost you again. I'm so sorry. sorry. For that. My, my connection probably because I have a lot of. Yeah. Okay. As I was saying, emergency communication, this can happen. <laughs> that happens. That happens. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as you were saying, uh, the integration of our knowledges will be possible only if we will be able to combine inclusion and parsimony. But I was thinking, what about mindfulness and the Green Deal goals? Uh, because we know that our university is really committed to these uh, kind of pur purposes and goals. Yeah, this, this is probably the, the real challenge for the future. I think that uh, we have to reduce all the travels and all the uh, uh, connection that can be really uh, uh, run, let's say, uh, on the basis of different things, including uh, all these uh, uh, streaming activities that we are doing uh, in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this period. At the same time, we have to uh, reduce uh, short-time mobilities uh, uh, that are sometimes uh, really unrelevant in terms of experience, and and at the same time using the, the 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 resources that you can save from this for getting longer periods of mobility, especially for students within small numbers of uh, uh, universities. And the idea of the uh, European uh, University Alliances can be can be really helpful in in in, in this respect. So people they should be uh, mobile. As, as in the last uh, 20 or 30 years, at the same time uh, have, uh, having a more uh, specific experience about knowing uh, the other universities, being part of these universities, maybe doing exams, for instance, in two or three other universities instead of only one, and uh, uh, spending a longer period uh, without traveling so much back and forth. And this can be a, um, a, an alternative model. And then, of course, using uh, co-working, using technology to, to work continuously from the first year to the third year, using double degrees, using uh, uh, common programs, anything that can be useful to, uh, you know, to feel uh, the same identity. So people uh, should be uh, connected to uh, two or three other universities and being part of this university, not simply a student from Siena uh, having an experience uh, uh, maybe in France or maybe in UK. No, being a European or an international student. This is the challenge for the future, in my view. Okay. Um... I was reading about uh, a review from our international offices and they were saying that the 60 per percentage of uh, the international student of our university is on a physical or a virtual mobility. What can, what are the tips that we can give to them? Because some of them are still in, in Siena or some of them are on, are on a virtual mobility and still in connection with us it is important i i think as you as uh, the rectors uh, um, delegate to the internationalization to like to address uh, some tips uh, for them some advices for them sure i mean this is a crucial thing we are happy that uh, we didn't lost we didn't lose so many so many students around uh, we have a uh, roughly uh, uh 60 percent of people that they wanted to to keep going their, their, their experience of mobility, uh, the outgoing students, and some of them, uh, of course, they're uh, isolated anyway. S some they decide to come back, but they want to uh, go back to their uh, uh, Austin University. They are following the courses in the Austin University. And the same applies to the incoming students. I hope that some of them, they are still connected with us. And this is important. 
I repeat, we, we, we have to avoid interruption in this experience. Uh, of course, this uh, entails a, a big problem of socialization. It's not exactly the same. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm trying to, 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 to you know, to, to get a continuous uh, work with, uh, with my colleagues and my students, but this is not the same. So we have to learn how to, uh, to, to make these uh, people really uh, so, uh, able to socialize. And the virtual, in, uh, international virtual studio would be a fantastic, a fantastic uh, instrument to, 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 to involve them. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, the, the critical thing that we have to avoid is uh, frustration from uh, uh, the idea that we are burning our time. When I was in the Erasmus, many decades ago, uh, I was trying to use all single minutes, you know, of my life in order to, to, to get uh, uh, connected socially, culturally, uh, academically, and so on. Uh, I, I understand that now it could be really, really difficult to do that for people they had to stay in their, in their small rooms. But we have to, to you know, to, to enforce this, uh, this, uh, this uh, stimulation and this uh, motivation. Uh, I'm sure if we are Passing this, uh, they would feel stronger and stronger, and maybe they will repeat the experience, maybe in Siena, maybe in another university, it doesn't really matter, but they will be stronger. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to check if there is uh, some questions. Okay, uh, someone is saying hi to you, Professor from Colombia, and he's saying we will meet again, like, you will meet again. <laughs> And, um, okay, we have a question from you, Radio Siena. Uh, Professor, you mentioned a Green New Deal before. Uh, could you please tackle this issue? Well, uh, this is a, a big uh, issue and a big challenge. Uh, generally speaking, the, the, the goals of the Green Deals are uh, already uh, set. And, of course, uh, in Siena, we are very happy and proud that uh, we we have a a, a special um uh, attention sensibility for the for the sustainability goals but uh, i think the effort for the future is to bring this goal within all the universities not in a specific research center in a specific uh, uh, department we have to uh, integrate the system of uh, the Green Deal in terms of policies from the little university, from the little institution to the bigger, to the, uh, you know, to the gigantic uh, uh, projects of the European Union. And actually, uh, the Green Deal, uh, uh, let's say, aspect of, uh, of our uh, everyday work in the university should be simply trying to, this is my, my, my let's say, uh, personal wish even for my future. I want to select my travels. I don't want to go to places, whatever, congresses, travels uh, for, for you know, private things, just to travel, which I did in the past. <laughs> I, have to, I have to confess because I love uh, traveling. I want to select the traveling and I want, I want to produce, uh, you know, uh, the, the, just the minimum of pollution in order to get uh, the maximum of benefit from my from my traveling, social benefit, collective benefit, and even individual benefit, of course. So this is actually the principle that should be moving all our policies from our university to the European Union to the global world. Okay, another guest, Valeria, is asking, how could we have some news about the mobility for the following academic year? This is a kind of practical question. <laughs> Well, uh, we have a lot, and actually, my colleagues at the, at the Division of Internationale are producing, uh, you know, continuously document that you can find on, of course, on the website, uh, uh, the frequently asked questions and so on. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we are going to a sort of postponement of all the deadlines, for sure for the European Union, less sure for the uh, bilateral agreements with the specific universities. But, of course, uh, we, we are trying to... Um, to uh, allow, let's say, all the people already selected for this academic year as mobile students to have more time to complete their, their learning agreement. We are probably going, but I'll tell you in the next days, uh, to postpone even the, the uh, mobility of the next academic year, hopefully not for a whole semester, but just for a few weeks in order to, to, to send all the people around. 
In any case, we are ready to start yeah. in a virtual uh, mobility, as we did in this semester, to move as soon as possible to the, to the physical mobility. Okay, so for every tip and every news, you can check uh, all the pages, the internet pages of uh, the International Department. Thank you. So, uh, we have a question from Sequera92. Sorry if I <laughs> as, uh, sorry if I spelled your name incorrectly. Um, the guest is saying, hello, I'm from Costa Rica and I'm planning to move in September. But the students' visas are hold on, are on a hold on. Uh, what are the options for the students with this kind of problem? Well, I'm afraid that this is uh, falling exactly in this period of transition because uh, when we we talk about postponement, uh, although the postponement hopefully should be really uh, short, September will be still uh, within the post lockdown regime. So I think that we have to wait for uh, at least a one month or two. But uh, I, well, I'll tell you more. I'll tell you more, uh, and the and. I'll, I'll discuss this with the with the, with the officers in the next days. Okay, so uh, you will uh, like pass all the information to us, and you can check all the news and the information on the UCNA, uh, Uni Siena and the UCNA campus accounts on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Sofia Belluti is asking, how about the students that are going to start the Erasmus in the next academic year? What is their destiny? Uh, as I told you, we are planning to confirm all the uh, the mobility schemes. Of course, we cannot, uh, you know, um, we have to consider the possibility that some destination will be uh, disappearing because in some cases, some universities, they uh, autonomously decided to, to stop the, the mobility for one year, for instance. This is not mm -hmm. the case of Siena. So I, I hope that uh, I will be able to respond positively in a positive way to all the people that try to confirm their mobility for the academic year uh, 2021. Okay, so let's hope together for everybody because this is in really important to still be in connection and to still like uh, can use this tool that uh, the Erasmus uh, uh, is giving to us, the opportunity that the Erasmus would give us. Um, okay, last question. Erasmus for students can be substituted by virtual lessons, but when it comes to Erasmus for a trainership, the situation is more complicated. News on that horizon? That's another critical point. Uh, you're perfectly right. We try to save uh, also uh, the aspect of the traineeship um, using the idea of uh, a smart working, whatever. Uh, where possible. I mean, this is not possible for many things. Uh, for instance, for, for the medical, uh, uh, you know, for the clinical aspects of uh, the traineeship of, of uh, students in medicine. But where possible, we are uh, using the smart working mood in order to um, uh, not penalize too much the people who are in mobility as trainees. Okay, thank you. Um, Professor, one of our guests knows that you are a great guitarist uh, and he's asking us to play something, but I can tell, can I answer <laughs> that? You can check professors, you can check actually okay. professors' uh, Facebook page because on that you can find all of his beautiful albums and music and, and plays. Um, okay, yeah, sure. I check that too, <laughs> because I check that too. Okay. Uh, Professor, during this quarantine and social distancing time, uh, do you have any reading tips for us? Well, I, I think I was thinking about that because this time I'm not talking about my discipline. I talk about a professional aspect of, of uh, uh, you know, my, my, my life, but not necessarily connected to my readings. But I have a couple. Uh, well, actually, I, I'm, I'm suggesting the book of my life, which is my favorite book, you know, uh, ever which is uh, uh, Kerouac on the road. This is a wish. Oh my God. A wish that you can, take, you can take your travel on the road as soon as possible. And this is a wish for me as well, because uh, I really need to get a little bit okay. far away for a while. Uh, and the second one is more professional. Maybe a student in zoology could find a little bit 
uh, boring, but I think it's a, it's a it's a reading for everyone. As the discovery of uh, the America from uh, uh, the point of view of journalist uh, of uh, two hundred and half uh, ago, his name was uh, um, Tocqueville, and this book is called Democracy in America. This was my first book uh, I I I I could buy when I arrived in US in ninety two at the end of ninety two. And this is still one of my favorite political science books. So these are my suggestions for you today. Okay. On the road of Kerak is one of my favorite books. So the greatest reading tip I ever <laughs> believe me. Um Professor, unfortunately the time is it's kind of over because we have some guests uh, like after us, some another live after us. I really wanted to thank you for your first intervention in uh, International Virtual Studium. I do remind you that uh, our next appointment is on is next week, next Thursday, always at 6 p.m. And you will see my colleague Mattia from uh, U Radio Siena which we'll discuss about uh, with another professor always on International Virtual Studium. Um, I do thank also uh, the uh, rectors of the University of Siena for uh, giving to UCNA campus the opportunity to jump on, uh, you know, the mainly account, the most important account of uh, the university. And uh, of course, uh, thanks to UCNA campus, which I'm part of, and uh, thanks uh, uh, to uh, U Radio Siena and thanks to Ciclo Maggio. Uh, I wish you a, the very best of the evenings, and I'm going to meet you next week for, with International Virtual Studium. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Marilao. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.